I hope this burger doesn't kill me. Because I bought it earlier and I forgot about it in my room. And I left for a couple hours. Just shit my floor. And I got back and I threw it in the refrigerator after about four hours. So, I don't know. Whatever. So, I'm not around any, any time after this. Just remember. Tainted burger. That makes a great lawsuit, though, wouldn't it? So, if I live, I'll be rich. Or pseudo rich, anyway. <clears throat> so, this kind of harkens back to the old days when I first started broadcast. I would just sit here because I was bored and just kind of go about my business and eat and watch videos and make fun of them. So, why don't we do that? Go back to the old days. Just for fun. And for those of you listening for the first time, I used to get quite a bit of enjoyment out of making fun of Jesus Freak 777. The guy's, a, he's crazy. And I first got introduced to him because he make it, made a re response to one of my videos criticizing me. And he had taken everything I said out of context. It was clear. And uh, so I made a response to him, which only that was the first time I had ever responded to anybody with a video. I only did it one time after that. <clears throat> but his was probably the most uh, intelligent response I ever had. And so it was like uh, I had to respond because it's, I mean, <laughs> that's all I got. But he's he's released a lot of videos since then, but one of my favorite things to do was to, uh, to sit here and just listen to his videos and just kind of make fun. As we go along, I don't know if I still got it in me, but it was awfully funny. This is his intro song. He's got this silly little animation. Hey everyone, it's Jesus Freak with you once again. And, and we're all very, very excited to have Jesus Freak with us. This guy is crazy. He's a... Uh, He's a big KISS fan, but he won't let his kids play violent video games. I wanted to talk to you about a really good topic today. Um, See, his perception of a really good topic is generally a little weird. Topic very near and dear to my heart. It's something I do. Let me guess. It's the Bible. Each and every day. I do it throughout the day. Sometimes I do it without even realizing that I've started, and sometimes I stop doing it. And I realized I showed a little disrespect by not focusing. I hope it's not talking about masturbation. Basically, I'm talking about prayer. Oh. Through the day at work. Same thing. I'll start a prayer with my Heavenly Father, get distracted, and then 20 minutes later I realized, whoa, I was in the middle of talking to God, and I stopped. And I realized, you know, I should have more discipline, but I'm sure my Heavenly Father understands that. At least I'm trying. And I'm So when you get fired from your job, you tell your wife, well, at least God understands. Doing the best I can. Well, I want to talk to you guys about prayer because a person by the name of Stagger Lee, or Stagger Lee, sent me a great um, question, or uh, uh, a message, with a couple questions. And so I want to read through it, and I want to tackle these one by one. I'll read it in its entirety. You put, I'd like to hear your views on prayer. I'm very interested in the psychological and healing aspects of prayer. I'd like to ask how you think it compares to meditation and rituals what do you think that prayer does for the human psyche? And I hope that they were making fun of him. Because this guy is not the type that you would go to for any, uh, for any like, advice or anything, especially when it comes to God. I mean, he's just like, like 100% evangelist, has his own ideas, and he just talks shit. He gets it wrong half the time. Well, first, I'd like to answer about the psychological aspects the psychological and healing aspects of prayer I believe that our Heavenly Father does deliver healing through prayer okay what kind of healing and we just have to be receptive to it we need to make sure that we're asking a humble way but how does this it's funny 
the way he words things, we have to be sure to ask in a humble way. I think the Bible, the whole point, I was trying to drive home, ah, was that you should just simply be humble. You shouldn't have to like sit out and think, okay, it's time for me to be humble because i got to ask God for something. This affects our psyche and our psychological state. That, I think, is even more important than our physical healing state. I believe that... That's what Howard Hughes believed. That's why I died on an airplane with two-foot-long hair and syringes broke off in his thighs. If we lived on this earth with a Heavenly Father that we had no open avenue of communication, such as prayer, we would be destroyed. Could you imagine... Wow! That was a fucking epiphany. It, did you hear that, everybody? If we lived on the earth without an open line of communication to God, we'd be destroyed. Damn. Even if you had a, a wife that you loved and you moved away for 10 years and lived in another country and you were never able to speak to her, over time you would grow distant and your love would fade and you would, uh, you know, you're hurt. Your broken heart would scar over and... But why, what? If you loved her, what, why would... This is a bad analogy. If you were reunited ten years later, you would be different people and you would not have been able to grow together. Yeah, because she'd be like, where the fuck were you? And I, I, I would dare say that your love might not even exist. And I believe that is how our relationship with our Heavenly Father would be if we had a... So if you stop praying, God stops loving you? Father in Heaven that put us here and with no form of communication with Him whatsoever. So I think prayer helps our psychological well-being and our psyche because it allows us to know that He loves us so much that He listens directly to us and that's a morale booster for us. It just sounds like something's just in your head because not everybody believes in prayer. So does that mean God doesn't love them? Because He didn't open that door? As Christians. That's a Really, it's a powerful notion to know our Heavenly Father listens. Now, you did ask how this compares to meditation and rituals. Well, first, I'd like to say there's a couple types of meditation. There's my favorite type of meditation where we, we ponder the teachings of Christ and oh, we, we consider how to apply them to our lives and we mull them over and we wait and we listen. This is the inherent problem. I actually touched on this on the show is that we, we mull over, this is the Christians, we mull over the lessons that are in the Bible, and then we wait. Sit around and wait. Think about how to apply in our lives, but then we wait. We just listen for God to inspire us. We just we just listen for God to inspire us, because that's what, that's what Christians do, because there's no point in reading the Bible and using your brain. On how to direct, or how to apply these teachings to our lives. It's, yeah, and I got it, I'll make an admission to everybody. This is, this is, I, I got to tell you something. From the reason that I'm, I'm motivated to do anything is because I've sat around for so long waiting for God to guide me. And it's just happening. It's out of my control. And such. So that type of med meditation can be extremely beneficial. But the, you know, the, the home, home type of... And he's making fun, by the way. He's... You'd have to see it. You know... Meditation to me is just hocus pocus, hooey fooey. It's Harry Potter is the devil. It's looking within to find the you that is the yin and the yang and the the um, everlasting happiness ball that's within you and you're unleashing it and you are looking within yourself. That whole thing is just silliness to me because I don't want to look inward to me for answers because um, isn't that what this whole video is about? I disappoint myself because I don't have all the answers. I need to have a source greater than I am that I can go to and say, hey, you know, it's like if I'm studying algebra, I surely am not going to teach myself algebra. I will go to an algebra. Einstein did. Actually, Einstein taught himself Euclidean geometry. Algebra teacher, someone far greater in algebra, and say, hey, can you teach me? And that's kind of how I view meditation. Why would I look within me for happiness when you know, I, I don't have the answers. So that type of meditation, I think, is just a bunch of fooey. <laughs> fooey. Well, your next aspect is you said, what do you think that prayer... Sorry.
Yeah, do you think that prayer makes us lazy in reaching for our goals? And I would say absolutely it possibly can. I don't think it always does. Because you give this example, you say if we pray for something, we just pray and hope God grants our wish. But if we don't pray, then we know it's up to us to work hard to obtain our goals. Now, before he addresses that, let me say that he just said that prayer and meditation is essentially sitting around thinking and then waiting for answers. Well, there are certain things. If we ask God to help us with a diabetes that we might have, uh, you know, it's very important. But you know what? There are things we can do. There are, uh, like what? There's no cure for it. There are a dietary changes that we can make. There are um, exercises that we can do. There are, you know, habits that we can change that can help us. So when we ask for help with our Heavenly Father for almost anything, we need to do so with, a, with an attitude that we will make changes within ourselves. Why did you have to ask God to not eat candy bars? To help accomplish what we are asking God to do. Because sometimes when we ask God for things, we, we really need to change our ways. And I would even say that a great deal, uh, deal pickle. of the things that we ask for are things that we can actually um, influence by making changes, such as we can ask God for a new job. Well, why do we want a new job? We want a new job because we can't stand our co-workers and we don't get along with people and such. So we may ask our Heavenly Father, um, Lord, help me find a new job. Well, maybe the... Wait a minute. There's... Hold on. best way to ask, instead of just saying, hey, help me find a new job and expecting the Lord to plop a new job in front of you with a telephone call from some human resources manager, maybe we can ask our Lord, Lord, I need a new job. Can you please help me? I'm not getting along with my coworkers. Lord, if it's your will that I stay in this job, then I pray that you ask that you help me learn to deal with my coworkers and maybe be forgiving. And to Doesn't this just kind of add like a third dimension to regular everyday decision making? I mean, is it really that, do people, are they that weak? Like, I need to uh, work things out. And I mean, this is just frustrating. Every time I watch these videos, I get, I get very, <clears throat> uh, very frustrated with this guy. If you decide to help me find a job, dear Lord, help me to still mend my relationships with these co-workers and be forgiving before I leave. So that way, when I go to my next job, I can not bring this type of a, a problem with me again. You know, it's all how we ask for things. If we ask God for a Ferrari, I highly doubt he's going to plop one in your front yard. Uh, and he's probably not going to give you a new job either. But if you needed a car, I don't think it's unreasonable say, Lord... I need a, a new car. My car is kind of a jalopy. It's falling apart. And I can't get to and from work to, to feed my children. Lord, I want to glorify you and I want to feed my babies. And I need a car to get to work. And Can you please help make it possible? Maybe, Lord, maybe you can help me get a part-time job in the evening. But see, now that comes right back down to personal decision-making. And by, I think what it comes down to is just talking out loud qualifies as praying and kind of talking out your thoughts, and this is, I mean, you can see it happening right here on the screen. He's sitting there thinking while he's talking, and as he thinks, he comes up with solutions. Now, I don't think God's talking through Jesus Freak 777. He's a KISS fan. Or, or you know, or whatever it takes, Lord, as long as your will is, is, is had. You see, that type of attitude, our Heavenly Father will, in my opinion, be more prone to bless you with. Yeah, but he ain't going to give you a part-time. you got to go get it, you tard. He, because it shows an attitude of humility, an attitude of, of desire to, to improve oneself and to glorify him through our actions. So simply just asking for things and expecting them to poof, magically appear, probably not the best avenue of prayer that we can choose. So um, we also need to realize that there are more aspects of prayer than simply asking for things. We really need to focus on praising our Heavenly Father and giving Him all the glorification. Because part of our communing, our communing with God 
It is not just to ask for things. If we had children that merely came to us and said, Daddy, can I have money? Daddy, can I have the keys to the car? Daddy, take me to the store. Daddy, do this. We eventually would say, hey, whoa, how about you come to Daddy and talk to me about something other than what you want and need? How about we just talk about how how your life is going? How about you show interest in me for who I am as your pop? Why can't you ask me how my day is going? I, but he hasn't mentioned that not once. Do you think that's actually his praying style? God, how you doing, buddy? That's good to hear. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I just got done beating the wife and I'm pretty tired. See, that's how we expect each other to treat her. How we expect each other to treat us. Um, I mean, other people to treat us. And I'm quite certain that's where our Heavenly Father wants us to treat Him. He's not just a vending machine that we go to with a prayer and punch in the buttons and he, he spits it out. We need to let Him know that we we enjoy our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Yes, He is there to help us when we need help. But He's really there to comfort us in our grief, comfort us in our sadness. Sounds like a pretty hard job. Jesus Christ, I don't I don't think I could uh, handle it. I don't think anybody could I mean, just... To be in there to just take people's grievances all the time, and sit around and cry together. Also, for us to share in his in our joy, for us to thank him for our joy and for the wonderful things that happen. How much joy is he getting out of that? Thanks, and then cry. Thanks, and then cry. We are to have a, a multifaceted relationship <clears throat> with God, just like we do with family members and with loved ones. We want enjoy our loved ones through the good times and the bad times and our Heavenly Father is much the same he wants to carry us through the good times carry yeah but just sit and think about it for a minute because uh, you talk about family members in bad times they tend to kind of go away and uh, yeah. you you want to base uh, your relationship with God on family structure I can tell you that generally uh, God you know in that scenario God would be the one who would be like eh, you're on your own buddy carries through the bad <laughs> go pray to Go pray to Allah. At times, and he wants to see that we're willing to walk through the good and bad times also. Because the stronger we walk through it, and the better we walk through it... The see, now he's getting that glazed over look in his eyes. Where he just... I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It's like that fake... He's seen somebody else do it, and he's emulating, and he... He feels good because he feels like he's saying something that's good and beneficial, but it's really not because it doesn't make any sense to any, any type of rationale or logic. The more it gives him glory because the, the more, the more we, I guess what I'm trying to say is, the better we are as Christians, the more we can endure hardships. Our Heavenly Father sees, wow, you know, this, this person really is, is, is mustering up all this courage. And then the Pope commands that the Crusades commence. Because they have faith. That I'm with them. It's just, we really need to commune with our Heavenly Father. That's all I can really say. We need to commune with Him through prayer. Well, um, the last part of this question you asked me, you said, um, um, how often do I pray and what it, is it for? Is it always a request? Absolutely not. I, I pray to, I mean, absolutely not. It's not just for requests. I pray to God for all aspects of life. Um, sometimes I probably ask for too many things. I'm guilty of that at times. Some, you know, I lose my keys in the morning and say, Lord, please help me find my keys. You know, I'm, I'm sure the Lord has better things to do than to help me find my lost car keys. So, yes, um, I could stand to work on my uh, prayer uh, relationship. How often do I pray? I try to pray a lot. Sometimes I forget, and sometimes I remember, and I'm, I'm just like the rest of you guys. I struggle with it. Uh, so, I uh, would say this, I could definitely pray more. I don't think there's ever a point when we're praying too much. So, I hope that each and every one of you can take a good attitude of prayer with you through life. Nah, I'm tired of watching this.